So this is going to be a quick video demonstrating the importance of having a large enough decoupling resistors in the B plus uh, supply of a tube amplifier. So this amplifier I have on the test bench right here is the same amplifier that I was working on in my uh, 6L6 GC balanced amplifier part one video. So if you want to see more information about this amplifier and take a look at the schematic and the design process or whatever, that video is up on my channel. But anyways, um, what we have here is two stages of 6SN7. So this 6SN7 right here is a uh, voltage amplifier. This one is a driver. And then of course we have our output tubes right here, which are 6L6 GCs. And then we have our uh, 5U4G rectifier. It's a very simple amplifier. It doesn't have a phase inverter. So this is just um, voltage amp for each side of the push-pull pair, driver for each side of the push-pull pair, and then our output tubes. And so the problem with this uh, version of the amplifier as it's built right here is that it motorboats. And what motorboating is, is basically a low frequency oscillation in the amplifier. Usually it will be kind of below the audible range, but you would hear the harmonics potentially as it really, it'll be, you know, below 20 hertz. It really thumps your speakers in and out if you have it connected to drivers. Of course, I do all my testing with a load resistor instead of a driver, so I don't have to hear whatever, you know, ungodly sounds come out of this thing when it's not working but um actually and it's kind of hard to see motorboating it's it's produces the meters digital meters actually update kind of too slowly to even really show you what's going on but we have a nice analog uh amateur right here and that really lets you see what's going on with the motorboating so i'll show you that in a second but um yeah the cause of the motorboating in this amplifier is that the decoupling resistors are too small and so I'll show you a picture right now of the current version of the schematic that I'm using for this amplifier. Um, that's the version that's configured right now, the one that doesn't work. So this version of the schematic has um, the B plus supplies a simple tube, uh, full wave tube rectifier, capacitor input with a choke. And then we have marked as B plus is, the, um, is where the B plus goes to the um to the output tube so that's marked as b plus on the schematic then marked as v2 plus is our driver tube power supply and you can see there is a 200 ohm resistor decoupling the v2 plus supply from the um from the b plus and then our screens are also taken from that and then we have a 200 ohm resistor between um between V2 plus and V1 plus. So I'll just show you back to this, uh, the amplifier itself right here. Um, the 200 ohm resistors are mounted to this little tag board right here. And I have this 1.5K ohm resistor right here, but it's not in circuit as you'll see. Um, and this resistor is actually the solution, spoiler alert to the problem. So we'll put that in circuit to fix the problem in a second. But um, essentially when you don't have large enough resistors, you're not filtering out the low frequency noise that occurs between uh, stages. So if one stage has a very slight, you know, variations in current draw, those can get fed back if they're low enough in frequency and they're not being filtered adequately, they can get fed to an earlier stage in the amplifier. And then you get a sort of a feedback loop where that stage is then, you know, amplifying these variations that then get fed back in even higher magnitude to the, to the, subsequent stages and then you sort of amplify this low frequency noise throughout your amplifier and the way to prevent this is to include higher value um higher value resistors and also to increase the capacitance now we have plenty of capacitance for decoupling we have a 47 microfarad um decoupling slash filter capacitor with each of with each of these um v plus supplies with v2 plus with v1 plus and with a screen supply each have a 47 uh, microfarad capacitor, which is large enough. The problem here is inadequate resistors, but the filtering is of course a function of both the resistor and the capacitor. So if you increase one, um, you can decrease the other and vice versa. Anyways, without further ado, I want to turn this amplifier on in this uh, incorrect, we could say, configuration. And I'll show you that at motorboats, I'll show you what it looks like in the current draw on the output tubes, and we can, um, then add in the resistor and see that it fixes the issue. So what I'm going to do right here, and I am running this on a Variac um, because I don't want this motorboating at full power. 
that would, you know, I don't want to burn out anything. So we are running this on a Variac. Um, it's over to the left, it's not on camera, but it is in circuit. I have this panel that switches um, my Variacs, DBTs, etc., in and out of circuit. So let's turn this on and the current will slowly come up and we will see that it starts to motorboat once the current is high enough. So the amplifier is on now. You can see our voltage here. This, am this uh, voltmeter is a little bit low. It's actually probably closer to 100. Um, our tubes haven't warmed up yet. So we can see this is these uh, meters are showing the current draw from the tubes, from the output tubes, that is. So we'll see as they come up. They're coming up regularly now, but they're going to start to do something irregular. Here you can see that variation. They're bouncing around. The current draw should not be bouncing around like that. Um, and you can see this meter has an even harder time understanding what's going on. It's just constantly, you know, auto ranging itself and it's barely even showing any values. This cheaper meter is actually having a better time of it. But you can see that this looks really weird on the, on the current meters. It's hard to tell what's even happening. But if we go zoom in on the panel ammeter, we can see that it's kind of jiggling back and forth. It's actually really slight, so it's hard to see. I've got to stabilize the camera. But you can see right there that our ammeter is actually jiggling back and forth like that. Um, that is actually easier to see on an analog meter because the frequency is so low that the DMMs have a hard time even understanding what's going on. They're constantly auto-ranging themselves. Um, but you can see it on the panel ammeter here that's wiggling back and forth that current draw. That's probably the same frequency as our oscillation. So you can see it's a very low frequency oscillation here. Um, but yeah, so let's fix the problem now by adding a resistor. So I'm going to turn this off. All right, so now you can see what I've done here is I've simply added this 1.5k ohm resistor and I've put this in circuit. So now this 1.5k ohm resistor is separating um, our V uh, 2 plus from our V1 plus. And of course we already had a 200 ohm resistor there, so the combined resistance between V2 plus and V1 plus in the power supply is now uh, 1.7k ohms, as I'll show on the schematic right now. Um, so yeah, so we've just increased the value of that, uh, that power supply decoupling resistor, and now let's power up the amp, and you'll see hopefully that um, that we no longer have this oscillation issue. So once again, our tubes start out drawing very little current. We have to wait for them to uh, warm up. All right, so the current draw is starting to increase. And I'll show you again the ammeter. And you'll see now that we no longer have any oscillation. Uh, the amplifier is stabilized. And you can also see that when I show the uh, multimeters, there now our um, output tube uh, current is, and this is plate current, is stable. And they're not auto ranging like crazy like they were before. The key sight meter is much faster, so it makes it look like there's a it's jumping around a little bit, but you can see that's still about 60 milliamps. So we're pretty steady and you, there's no oscillation apparent on our analog uh, ammeter. So yeah, simple fix. And um, if you have an amplifier that is oscillating, I'm gonna turn this off so I don't electrocute myself. If you have an amplifier that is oscillating um, in this fashion, a low frequency oscillation like that, um, you should, of course, check the uh, power supply decoupling between the stages. So, you know, if it's a design that's already been designed by somebody else and you're restoring it or repairing it, obviously you would expect that the designer took into account the proper amount of resistance and capacitance. But of course, it's possible that you have a short, so maybe your resistor, you know, is partially shorted or fully shorted, or there's something else that's shorting it out and, you know, you don't have the right amount of resistance. Maybe someone modified or moved the resistors, you know, anything like that could happen. Or alternatively, your capacitor, and probably more likely, your capacitor could be um, 
you know, could have lost some of its capacitance. Maybe it's completely leaky. Maybe it's gone open. Capacitors, of course, fail in all sorts of ways, especially the electrolytics that you typically see in decoupling applications. So, um, yeah, that's another thing to check um, to make sh just make sure that your capacitor is providing the right um, value of capacitance and that your resistor is correct. And of course, if you're like me and you're designing an amplifier, um, you can calculate these uh, these RC filters such that your cutoff frequency is something really low and that will fix the issue. Or if you're like me and you're lazy and you also want your power supply voltages to be as high as possible for your tubes, um, so you want the minimum amount of resistance necessary to stop these oscillations, you can just build it and see um, what you need to do. And I might have to increase these resistances a little bit more to make sure we're fully stable, especially the 200 ohm resistor uh, between the drivers and the B plus. Um, in the output tube B plus, so might have to do that. But anyways, um, quick video just demonstrating that in case anyone's having issues with motor boating, um, that is definitely one solution to it. Oh, and one more thing to add: this is a form of motor boating that occurs even with no negative feedback because the feedback is actually occurring in the power supply. So if you have a form of motor boating that occurs only when your negative feedback is connected, that could be related to just phase shift in your low frequency cutoffs. Um, so that's kind of a separate thing, but low frequency uh, instability issues, even with negative feedback disconnected, very likely to, to be uh, motorboating induced by something in your B plus supply like this.